Uh, Adam Ollier, welcome to One Detroit. It's really great Thank to you. see you up here on Mackinac Island. I, I really am glad I'm getting to talk with you because for a couple of weeks now, I've wanted to pick your brain a little bit about insurance reform. You were one of the first Democrats out of the gate saying this is the way forward. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a compromise involved. It's not perfect, but I... I need this, my constituents need this. Tell me what your thinking was that led you to that position. So one of the big things for this was we haven't gotten anything done for years. Right? 46 years. And so over those 46 years, everybody's been saying, well, we need these 5, 10, 15 things. The final compromise, we got exactly those things done. We got rid of zip codes. We got rid of credit scoring. We got rid of gender, you know, all kinds of things that everyone's saying. If you do these, I'm 100% on board. Now, they weren't in in the first piece, but in the first one that passed, for the first time, I got legislation that said redlining was illegal as it relates to auto insurance. It said you must provide the same products all across the state at the same levels. You know, Senator Santana got something that said gender discrimination was no longer going to be tolerated. But the thing that was most important for me was I got a commitment from the Senate leadership and the House leadership that we were going to continue to work this out. And I had the comfort of knowing I had a Democratic governor who wasn't going to accept a bunch of nonsense. So we passed legislation out of the Senate and she said, not good enough. And we made it better in the House. And she said, mm, still not good enough. And they made it better, you know, coming back to the Senate. And we were able to pass something significantly better. And that's, legisl that's the legislative process. So, but in being out front, in, in front of the governor, in fact, uh, in, in, in favoring this, did you take a political risk that you may pay a consequence for? Will Democratic leadership say, hey, you're not really in line with uh, the agenda that we have here? So my, my leader, you know, Senator Annick, was very supportive. He knew where I was coming from about auto insurance. It was really important as I knocked doors and talked to folks. I mean, you know the neighborhood I grew up in, but I was knocking doors two blocks from my house on Calvert. Lady told me she pays $6,000 every six months for no fault. So not collision, not li just, liability just liability and PIP. And almost all of that is PIP. And so when we talk about what that means, that means she can't fix her roof. It means she can't make sure her home is safe. It means she can't invest in a small business or, or do any of the things that other people can't. This was the number one issue. And my leadership gave me the support that was necessary to go out and make this work. And we're supportive throughout that entire process. Now, yes, I, it was absolutely a huge risk. Anytime you step out and say, I'm standing in a position that is not the same as your, you know, some of your colleagues. Mm -hmm. but. That's what my people sent me to do, and we send folks to Lansing not to do the easy things, not to vote for the things that are super easy and that kind of stuff. They send us to take the, the tough decisions, and that's what leadership is about. So in the final bill, uh, as you say, we get rid of a lot of the discrimination that insurance companies were allowed to indulge before. We also get a strengthened oversight uh, in, in this commission that, that for a, a long time hasn't done the job that it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be doing, but we also still, some people say there's some vestiges of the old system. Talk about this territorial uh, kind of uh, uh, determinations that insurance companies will be able to make. Some people say that's just going to be redlining in another kind of iteration. So the beauty of it, when people talk about redlining, redlining is absolutely illegal. You can no longer redline under any shape or form, right? So you must provide the same level of coverage everywhere across the state. So if you want to provide unlimited in Ann Arbor, you've got to do that in Detroit. And you can't do it respective of zip code. So that's not a problem. Can they still use jurisdictions? Absolutely. Does that make sense? To some extent. But because we've made diffs stronger and allow them to, you know, do file and approve, they're not going to be able to do the same type of stuff that they were. So I have every confidence that Governor Whitmer and her administration will be able to hold insurance companies accountable. Yeah. So let's also talk about coverages. Uh, people will be able to select much less coverage yes. than they have to carry now. Some people say that's a two-tiered system that says poor people won't get uh, as much uh, protection as, as rich people. How do you answer that? I would say poor people don't have coverage right now. Right so now they have nothing. The, the majority of these folks have no coverage, right? So they have opted out of the system in the only way they can, which is not purchasing it. And I think people miss that. So earlier this year or, or last year, there was that by Felicia incident where the police officer pulls this woman over and polar vortex day because her tags aren't good. Her tags aren't good because she can't afford auto insurance. She's walking home on a freezing cold day and an officer is doing some really stupid stuff because she didn't have auto insurance. That's what this is going to stop. So when we talk about tears and all that kind of stuff, I think people miss that the reality on the ground is people don't have coverage and they need it. So really, from your perspective, this is about 
improvement, not perfection. And the opportunity, I suppose, to keep talking about it and keep moving things along. And if you want to keep unlimited, you're still going to get a 10% savings. But if you're a senior and you're on Medicare, you can be able to opt out completely and not have any issue. You know, if you're on Medicaid, you can get down to $50,000 and that's going to be real savings. That means that you're going to have the money in your pocket to do the things that are necessary in your daily lives that you can't do right now. All right, Adam Ollier, thanks for, uh, very much for being here with us on One Detroit.